Hello. In this video, I'm going to introduce to you how HPE MSA Virtual Storage Technology provides the perfect solution to the common challenges faced by small and medium-sized businesses when choosing an entry SAN array. Typically, the smaller the business, the tighter the constraints on resources, both financial and of time, that the administrators have for maintaining infrastructure and applications. In fact, often is the case that in the smallest of companies, there may not even be a full-time person responsible for the delivery of IT. It's therefore paramount that a solution have both simple management and a flexible architecture for it to be viable. Organisations that contain remote offices face a further challenge of only occasional visits by system administrators. And eventually, cost will enter the equation. And it is here where hybrid arrays, which utilize both solid state and spinning media in tandem, can offer affordable high performance. Additionally, due to the ubiquity of hypervisors, small businesses need a solution which can adapt to ever more mixed and changing workloads at low cost and with as close to no intervention or planning as possible. Prior to in-array storage virtualization, capacity was provisioned as traditional RAID disk groups. In MSA terminology, we refer to this legacy mechanism as linear storage and is now only found in obsolete MSA arrays. RAID is a great solution for increasing availability, performance and addressable capacity, but it also has drawbacks. Specifically, it prohibits a volume from consuming the capacity and performance of drives outside of its own disk group. It also means that the greater the number of volumes within a disk group, the greater the competition for a limited set of drive resources, which in turn can lower overall performance. The bottom line is that on its own, RAID is an often inefficient and uneconomical use of resources, as well as increasingly complex to manage over time. The HPE MSA array family builds on over 10 years, leading the entry storage market by tackling these challenges head on. Coming in three distinct flavors, the MSA provides the very lowest cost solution with the 1050 model, an economic introduction to hybrid storage with the 2052, and a fully flexible a la carte offering with the 2050, which also happens to support FIP certified data at rest encryption. All MSA arrays come with dual active-active controllers, each of which is responsible for its own pool of storage. A pool is an aggregation of one or more disk groups that form a container in which to store application data. In larger configurations, each pool can be configured symmetrically to maximize performance, while in smaller deployments, a single pool can often be equally as performant, yet more flexible. In fact, the majority of solutions for small businesses that are sub-20 terabytes would benefit more from a single pool arrangement than a dual. Pools provide a foundation that greatly reduces complexity and risk while improving overall performance. Additionally, by ensuring that drives are not allocated to dedicated workloads, waste is reduced and provides a greater return on investment. While the concept of virtualizing storage is not necessarily new or unique to the MSA, the implementation can vary greatly across vendors and the resulting benefits and pitfalls are equally as varied. In the remainder of this video, we'll dive deeper into the technology which will in turn explain what makes the MSA's implementation so effective. A pool's capacity is the sum of all disk groups within it, of which there can be up to 16. In this example, we have three tiers of storage of varying capacities, which together provide a total of six terabytes of usable capacity for the pool. A tier is comprised of disk groups of the same class, and each offers its own balance of cost, performance, and capacity. There is a performance tier for solid state media, a standard tier for 10 and 15K enterprise SAS drives, and an archive tier for 7.2K midline SAS drives. In keeping with a key tenet of the MSA, which is simplicity, then when adding a disk group to a pool, it will be automatically assigned to the appropriate tier for that drive class and will not allow you to harm performance by assigning it to one to which it does not belong. 
Volumes are created at the pool level, and depending on the nature of the I.O. and the decisions of the MSA's tiering engine, all volumes have the potential to be distributed across all drives within the system. To achieve this, the capacity within a pool is divided into pages, which are 4 megabytes in size, and are allocated to a volume as required by new data. As demonstrated here, the MSA's tiering engine has placed different parts of both volumes on all three drive classes, and in doing so maximizes the effectiveness of the higher performing drives. This mechanism not only achieves a greater balance within the pool in terms of consuming capacity and performance, but it also returns savings of both time and cost. But what if you don't need a hybrid or multi-tiered solution? Workloads such as CCTV, video production, and medical imaging are examples of datasets that are poor candidates for deduplication and compression, and due to its ability to deliver high capacity and high sequential throughput at a low price point, are common use cases for the MSA. At the tier level, multiple disk groups of the same class are aggregated together to not only provide a larger addressable capacity, but also to provide performance benefits. Wide striping allows all drives to participate together in response to a common workload, and for sequential workloads such as those found in the previous examples, it is especially effective. So now that we know the basics and have an understanding of the high-level benefits of the MSA's virtual storage architecture, let's take a closer look at how the automated tiering engine maximizes the cost-to-performance ratio and minimizes the need for an administrator to watch over the array. When first ingested and for as long as it is consistently accessed, data is considered hot. Over time, data tends to become less relevant to current business, and therefore the regularity that it is accessed declines. As a result, infrequently accessed data will gradually cool and become better suited to slower, lower cost drives. In an ideal world where money is no object or where the majority of data is known to be highly compactable, all flash arrays could be a great all-round storage solution. However, as an entry array, the MSA caters for both high performance and low-cost solutions by actively locating and migrating data at the page level to a tier that it is best suited to. In hybrid configurations, the MSA's tiering engine will proactively migrate hot, randomly accessed pages to SSD or cold and sequentially accessed data towards spinning media. However, that does not mean that it will unnecessarily reduce performance just because a page is not the hottest. Specifically, if there is capacity remaining in the performance or standard tier, then it will not use the slower archive tier. Only when the upper tiers are full with the coldest data overflow downwards, or if a volume's tier affinity setting is set to archive, which would instead try to place the entire volume there at all times. In simple terms, the MSA's tiering engine allows an organization to invest in a capacity of high-cost drives that accounts for the typical day-to-day -day requirements rather than what would be consumed over the life of the system. For example, the performance tier typically only needs to account for 10-15% to of the overall pool capacity to be effective in producing flash-like performance for the workloads that need it most of the time. It's certainly clear by now that tiering is cost-effective but the implementation of such a mechanism has to be well thought out if it's to be sufficiently performant for all applications. Many other tiering solutions will ingest all new data to the fastest tier, while simultaneously evicting cold data downward. Likewise, cold data always has to be evicted to make room for promoted data that has worked its way up from the lower tiers due to recent reads. Worse still, many tiering engines perform page promotions at set times during the day, which both impacts performance and is unresponsive to changing needs. Conversely, the MSA's approach is to ingest data to the appropriate tier in the first place and action page migrations in close to real time. When a new write enters the system, it will be assessed for whether it's part of a sequential write pattern, and if it is, then it will be directed to the fastest spinning tier with capacity. Because spinning media is well suited to sequential I.O., this mechanism has two distinct benefits. 
Firstly, it does not consume SSD capacity, which is better suited to latency-sensitive random I.O. And secondly, it removes the need for additional back-end I.O. to migrate those pages downward later on. If, on the other hand, an I.O. is random in nature, it will be sent to the performance tier, which will provide flash performance. To reduce the unnecessary back-end I.O. that would consume performance, once pages are located on a tier, the tiering engine will not move them again for at least 15 minutes. However, the engine is constantly monitoring for page hotness and can move eligible pages around as often as every five seconds. This responsive approach is highly effective and allows the HBEMSA to serve any number of workloads in unison while maintaining the right kind of performance for the right application. Some workloads are not predominantly random write heavy and may therefore have largely random read and sequential performance needs. For such environments, SSD read cache can make for a more cost sensitive hybrid solution. SSD read cache works in much the same way as performance tiering, except that tiering only takes place between the standard and archive tiers. This means that all writes, whether random or sequential, will be directed to the fastest spinning tier that has free capacity. When data is no longer able to be kept in the limited controller cache, so-called hints are given to the tiering engine to help it locate eligible pages into read cache. This means that when the data is read again, it will be in flash storage rather than mechanical, just so long as it was read randomly in the first instance. Data read sequentially will always remain on mechanical drives or possibly a part of it within controller cache. A distinct benefit of SSD read cache is that it is only a copy of data that otherwise is located on hard drives which are protected by RAID. As a result, it is not necessary to use a redundant RAID scheme for SSD read cache which in turn allows for a single drive to be used per pool. However, the maximum number of SSD read cache drives per pool is 2 and the maximum addressable capacity is 4 terabytes, which at the moment makes the 1.92 terabyte drives the best overall choice. The same proportions of SSD read cache should be maintained as with a performance tier, which again is between 10 and 15%. So this was just a quick run through of the benefits of virtual storage for the MSA with specific attention on the automated tiering engine. Hopefully it's clearer now how the MSA can simplify management and result in a more agile solution and at lower costs. When you have some time, I would encourage you to read the newly released Virtual Storage Technical Reference Guide for 5th Generation MSA, as it goes into finer detail on the inner workings of the system and will help you build better solutions. You might also want to consider booking time on the HPE Solution Demo Portal, where you can reserve a system to experiment with and learn more. But for now, thank you for taking time to watch this video, and goodbye.